It's the 1880s and the remarkable Thomas Alva Edison has just finished interviewing a prospective employee at his Menlo Park lab in New Jersey. He then takes the candidate and the rest of the team to a nearby diner for lunch. He orders soups for everyone and then watches intently as the candidate is having his soup. This act will determine whether Edison hires him or not. Will he or won't he? Hi. Welcome back to Stories at Work, a series where I share real stories from across the world that you can use when you want to drive home a business point. Our website, www.storyworks.in, already has over a hundred stories and we are adding one every week. Let's start today's story. Today we are discussing the remarkable Thomas Alva Edison, who really needs no introduction as one of the world's greatest inventors and entrepreneurs. With an astounding 1,093 patents to his name, Edison's innovations such as the phonograph, the movie camera, the alkaline storage batteries continues to influence our daily lives. Of course, it takes a team of talented individuals to bring such innovations to life. And Edison knew that finding the right employee was the key. So to ensure that he was hiring individuals who shared his dedication to innovation, Edison had a very unique requirement for all prospective employees. They had to have a bowl of soup in front of him. But it's not just any bowl of soup. Edison was looking for a particular behavior. He wanted to see if the the prospective candidates added salt and pepper to their soup before tasting it or if they waited until they had first tasted it to add the seasoning. Now those who prematurely seasoned their soup were immediately rejected because they relied on assumptions and preconceived notions rather than curiosity and willing to find out or ask questions. In Edison's eyes, such preconceived notions had no place in his business, as they were really antithetical to innovation. However, it's important to note that this wasn't a situation where candidates were just caught off guard and forced to, you know, have eat a soup in front uh, of him in a formal interview. Instead, they were typically, like I said, invited to a meal with the team and then soup would be ordered for everyone. And this allowed Edison to observe their behavior in a very natural setting. Edison was also known to ask candidates trivia questions such as, where do prunes come from? Or who invented printing? He wanted to gauge the intelligence and ensure that he was bringing in individuals who shared his level of curiosity and his dedication and thirst for knowledge. So for Edison, the best employee were those who consistently approached life with patience and willingness to ask questions. Impatience and a rush to judgment could potentially cause damage to the many projects they would be interested to develop and bring to fruition. So next time you are on a job interview and you find yourself offered a meal, remember that little things count. Now, there are many techniques people use to understand the candidate's attitude. In episode 67, I talked about the chauffeur's point of view being used by Tony Shea at Zappos. The link to that episode is in the show notes. Here's another interview technique. Chad Noss is a crew chief for the Chevrolet NASCAR racing team. His team has won NASCAR championships for a record making six times. Now, Chad Noss is to auto racing what, let's say, Sir Alex Ferguson is to football or Phil Jackson is to basketball. Now, Chad has a very interesting interview process. Now, after the interview, Chad sometimes walks with the candidate to the parking lot to say goodbye. But that's not the only reason he goes to the parking lot. Chad also checks out their cars. He's not interested in the type of car they drive or its price. He looks for cleanliness and maintenance. If food wrappers are lying on the seat or the car is dirty, Chad thinks that the candidate might not be a good fit for his team. Uh, Basically, he says he evaluates the candidate's abilities to take care of their own belonging to see whether they can take care of their team's equipment. A great way. Now, you know, uh, early in my career, and I'm talking the early 90s, when I was sitting in and observing senior sales managers interview candidates, 
I was often amazed with questions like, here, take my watch, sell it back to me. Or here, take my pen, sell me this pen. And I often wondered, that's funny. Aptitude or skill is easily trainable, especially when we are not looking for people who are expected to design rockets to be sent to space. What is important is attitude. I can teach the person how best to sell soaps to a retailer, but will he come to work when the heat in summer is scorching or when the monsoon doesn't relent? Will he go that extra mile to meet his target when he's physically exhausted? That is the attitude that is difficult to teach and definitely impossible to teach from scratch. What we need to find out is how do we assess such things in interviews? Now, where in business can you use these stories that I told you of Edison and Chaud Nas? Well, for one, you could use it to set context for brainstorming with your team about interview techniques you could use and whether the current one are designed correctly to identify the attitude you need in your team. The second message from the story is that not every question can, can be asked. A lot of it needs to come from your observation. True in candidate interview situation, as well as when you're doing, let's say, consumer research. As a marketer in the initial two decades of my working life, I almost always learned more from consumers by watching them buy or watching them use my products than by asking them questions. I hope you like these tiny stories. If you did, you can find many, many more on our website, www.storyworks.in. These stories are searchable using the business point you want to make. For example, if you key in uh, interview, attitude, uh, display, out of the box, Thomas Edison, you will find this story. So when you are looking for a story, go to our website, search for your keywords, and who knows, you may just find the story you need. The website and our YouTube channel has two playlists. The Story Bank playlist already has uh, 71 stories like this. Uh, you know, real stories, real incidences that you can share to drive home a business point or to, to inspire people to take action. The other playlist is called Leaders Speak. This has videos where leaders have shared stories that have created opinions they have. If you are sharing the same opinion with your team or trying to drive home a similar message, you could use that story. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Bye for now.